Hi everyone, so season 5 PTR is around the corner. There has been a lot of stuff in this patch. I've already covered this in my patch notes summary video. If you have not seen that, I do recommend you to go check it out. I've talked about kind of the big picture for all of the classes. And uh, well, for Sorks, it is not looking very good. So they start at the weakest point and they lose the most on top of it, at least based on the patch notes from what we can read into this so far. But we also have to keep in mind, this is not the final patch notes. This is just a PTR. Blizzard is trying to kind of like break up the old meta of the Sorks a little bit. So this is pretty obvious. And I think this is definitely good as well that they are trying that. And I would absolutely expect we're going to get huge buffs to the Sorks. There's also going to be unique reworks for all classes, for every single unique. Everything is going to get changed. Uh, that is also not visible currently. And we don't know about the season theme itself either. That might disproportionately affect the Sorks more than other classes as well. So there is definitely some hope here. And there's also those new uniques that are pretty interesting. So those are actually the main topic of this video. The Axial Conduit, a chain lighting unique. that you can see here right now. And then the uh, Vox Omnium. There's a new stuff coming that allows you to combine core and basic skills together in a pretty interesting way. So I want to talk about these because I've actually spent a bunch of time, uh, for example, working on some new planners. I also have a Hydra planner here, for example. This is also something that gets some pretty significant buffs here that uh, did not really fundamentally change, but there is a new temper now that kind of like uh, puts a bit of a spotlight here plus some extra Hydra buffs across the board. But this temper here could potentially lead us to a plus four or even plus six Hydra heads per cast <laughs> and you can get that twice so it depends on like how the master working will work with this depending on if this follows the regular stats system or the uh, passive ranks system so there are two different systems for master workings in play and uh, you could get either uh, plus 8 or plus 12 Hydra heads for an already four headed Hydra so depending on how that works again expect something like 50 to 70 or so Hydra heads if you also include the enchantment here and that can get pretty wild. So we'll see. Other than that, this is a pretty straightforward kind of like burning synergy build here. So I'm not going to go into all of the details now. You can go check out a planner if you like. It's definitely something I want to try out on the PTR and let's see how good this will be. But this is another thing to keep an eye on at least. Now, that being said, I do also have a chain lighting planner here. I did not make one for the uh, Vox Omnium just yet, but I will discuss what I think about this item. And I've also done some math on how good it actually is depending on how it works exactly for chain lightning we have the axial conduit let's go into that is this item this is actually something they have previewed and a lot of people believe this to be a very very powerful item that is kind of the savior of the sword class now personally i gotta say i would hold my expectations a little bit with this thing now there's one thing here which is kind of interesting which is that you have this explosion damage so uh, basically the way this works is they've actually previewed this on the Diablo campfire chat as well. Like you shoot out the chain lightning, it hits the targets a few times, comes back to you, drains mana, does a circle, and then goes out again. And does like multiple trips back and forth basically. A little bit how chain lightning already works, just that it has more trips and it drains its mana every time. And the thing is that the more chain lightnings you cast, the fewer trips you will have with each chain lightning. To the point where it kind of seems like spamming chain lightning is actually not encouraged. In fact, you probably only want to cast one or two of them. And potentially the chance to cast twice might even be an obstacle to this whole setup. Why am I saying this? Well, it's because of this math that I've been doing here. So I actually watched this in the um, campfire chat and I counted how many times this item was hitting enemies. So my expectation was that a single chain lighting should do a total of 12 trips, one going out and then 11 times coming back, draining six mana and going out again. So that's probably what you see here with, um, you know, this mana drain, it drains six up to 66 total. So this would be 11 times for whatever reason, this chain lighting only had 11 trips. So somewhere along the way, one of them went missing. Maybe I miscounted, but I checked it four times uh, or maybe it just kind of drains the six mana right from the start for example and this is why it's only 11 something like that again we have not actually tested this item yet but basically what happens here is that on every trip you get those three hits and then you get one hit from the chain lightning coming back to you and circling around you so at least in the situation where you are standing in melee range 
you can probably expect one extra hit from the circle and then three again one from the circle three again one from the circle and i imagine that if it's a single target they've only shown it on multiple target on ACM, it will be one hit one circle one hit one circle and so on so that's kind of what i expect to happen here so this means that we have 11 trips we're gonna have 11 hits and 11 circles for a total of 22 hits on a boss we're talking about bosses here because well boss damage is kind of what matters in diablo 4 currently it's like the only thing that matters when it comes to the pit when it comes to the tormented bosses and so on so dealing aoe damage is usually not really the concern as long as you can take down bosses so we're looking at boss damage here and we'll get 22 hits for one chain landing cast and this would take roughly 11 to 12 seconds so this was kind of the time that we saw this in the clip at least when there's multiple targets it might be a bit shorter when there's only one target because it doesn't jump between all of them all the time like this and it might be like you know one two one two one something like that and i imagine it might be a bit shorter like let's say eight seconds or so on a single target because it doesn't go back and forth between them so this is kind of like how i expect this to happen now there is one consideration here which is the unbroken tether aspect which uh, may or may not actually be good for this so that we have this um here this is unbroken tether this is a chain lighting aspect there's actually a new chain lighting aspect coming as well that does not really seem very good to me actually to be honest but there's this one as well and we actually can see this in action in the clip as well where uh during two of the trips in the clip uh this this unbroken tether actually procs and there's more jumps coming out basically so usually the way China works is it just like jumps back and forth without a circle around you and then you can just get more jumps meaning more damage on the boss however I'm not sure how this is supposed to work when it's supposed to return from the boss to you I don't think it will actually really do anything but who knows maybe we can be optimistic and unbroken tether is still useful in a boss scenario who knows other than that there's also this new chain lighting aspect called the lightning rod aspect where it says chain lighting has a 5 to 20 percent chance to chain an additional time when hitting crowd controlled enemies and bosses and will seek them as targets now kind of the same story here i think i'm not really sure how this is supposed to work when you have this axial conduit this is a new aspect coming in the same season that they're also making this new pants so i guess the idea is that they do work together and maybe on every trip it has a chance to get an extra trip for example but then again you are limited by how often can it drain the mana from you so you're still kind of limited to this 11 trips in total and i don't actually expect us to really do anything with the pants because it cannot really chain from one target to the same target again and if it chains back to you it will do the circle it will do the drain and we're back to where we started so at least that's my expectation right now and i believe that those aspects are mostly relevant for aoe damage both the unbroken tether and this new one the lightning rod aspect but i guess we'll see exactly how this works for now i'm pretty pessimistic about both of these and now this brings me to my other point here which is when you cast multiple chain lightnings what actually happens well you increase the mana drain per chain lightning because it says it drains six per chain lightning that is currently active so if you cast multiple of them let's say you cast two or you cast one and you get a double cast because that can happen from the pants itself for example without even tempering on your weapons you are forced to have a chance to double cast now if you have two chain lightnings in play you you basically divide the number of trips that each other chain lighting does by two so you see this here you're going to get six trips this means probably just six hits and six circles for a total of 12 hits per chain lightning and you have two of them and uh well look you have pretty much the same amount of total hits <laughs> at least on a boss so this is kind of like how i expect this to work and if you look at this here three chain lightnings four chain lightnings five chain lightnings and so on you see that nothing really changes and i'm kind of confused about how this item is really supposed to work at least looking at what it does here and looking at um you know what we saw in the clips because there was actually a clip where they did cast it i think three or four times and he saw exactly this in action you saw that all of the chain other things just expired way faster which you know may have been a result of them just running out of mana we didn't see the mana bar but also it has to expire faster because it drains more it literally says it drains for each active chain lightning so the more chain lightnings you have in play the less they will actually hit and it kind of leads to the point where they all are in equilibrium it doesn't matter if you cast one or two or three maybe there is like a slight extra benefit to doing that 
for example, that you always get kind of like an extra trip or something like that that doesn't actually cost anything. At least that was my expectation originally when um, I looked at this and I was like, okay, the first one shouldn't drain anything. So it should be like kind of like a free run. And this is actually how I've been calculating this. And we'll see exactly what happens here. There might be a minimal extra bonus of actually casting extra chain lightnings, but realistically for a build that is supposed to spam a certain core skill, this seems extremely weak. And we have another downside here, which is that chain lightning itself, the enchant got nerfed. So we have this somewhere up here. The chain lightning enchantment now has a four seconds cooldown. So even if you, for whatever reason, want to get as many chain lightnings as possible, you actually now get less of them. They have nerfed this. So previously you needed to spend 100 mana or I think 83 when you had the Enchanted Master Paragon board, which was yeah something like around three chain lighting cards, you get one extra. And now you get one every four seconds. So <laughs> that seems really bad. And potentially you might not even want those extra chain lightnings because of this stuff. So I'm not really sure where this will lead us. Now there is one extra thing here, which is this explosion damage on this weapon, uh, on this pants, which uh, looks kind of high. So it goes up to 26,000 lightning damage. But if you think about it, this is like roughly half an X-Falls explosion. And X-Falls right now can be triggered quite often by some builds, like for example, on Necromancers, they can do that with cause explosions and stuff. But I'm not really sure if they really use that. I said like any build out there that really wants to use X-Falls, now it will probably be a bit easier given that you can sustain the resources to actually trigger this um, lightning explosion a bit more often than for example X-Falls Ring, but it does roughly half the damage of an X-Falls explosion and I don't really see that being used all too often. So I don't really expect a damage value like this to really be that relevant. It's kind of like under the level of, I don't know, two Doom Doomer procs or so, or you know, there's a bunch of other effects like um, there's like two or three elemental search procs, for example. Now, how often can you proc elemental search, for example? Can you make an elemental search sorg really work well in like late game in the pit and so on? I don't think so at all, really. So every, actually trying to scale this kind of flat damage value here, it might help a little bit with the AOE clear. It might crit for a couple million or something like that, but we're looking at way, way higher DPS requirements if you want to be anywhere close to like an S tier build or even A tier build or something like that. Like even A tier builds, I guess, are probably in the range of like at least a few dozen million DPS on a single target. And I don't see this really contributing enough to make that happen. So those explosions, I think are mostly going to be relevant just to kind of clear up, you know, the, the small trash monsters, you know, that around here, the little fallen dudes and whatever, that kind of like just are part of the pack and you clean up the small stuff so you can chain lightning to the big stuff. So that's kind of like where I see this playing a role. But outside of that, not really. So yeah, while I think at first this item looks really amazing and I think it has a pretty cool and interesting design and it really, you know, changes how this game, game plays or how the chain lighting sock plays at least. I'm not sure if it's really that good after all. So it is probably an improvement. There is one thing here that is kind of interesting about it, which is that since it lasts so long, and there might not be a huge reason to spam chain lightning. You could actually go and only cast one single chain lightning and then start casting other stuff for like the next 10 seconds or so. So this is kind of interesting to think about here. If you only have one chain lightning just going, going its way and, you know, hitting stuff and coming back and doing its thing. And then, for example, you cast ball lightning. So you cast charge bolts if that ever becomes good, for example. That could be kind of interesting, I believe. And this is actually something that fits relatively well in the build that I've been working on lately. You might have seen that, the Andarial Sorg. So there might actually be a little bit of like potential there to play something like the Andarial Sorg, which I've actually kind of been optimizing lately and has performed actually better than I thought it would be, where you just throw in that pants and then you, this is actually a chain lightning build, use the chain lightning. And instead of then casting more chain lightnings that I've been using to trigger a lot of lucky hits, uh, to trigger those Andarials, uh, this is the main damage in this setup here. You can kind of just like passively let this uh, chain lighting float around, do its thing, and in those 10 seconds it's active, I'm just gonna cast other stuff. And in fact, I have played the chain lighting at this Andarial sock here without chain lightning. I've tried to play this with charge bolts, which also has pretty decent like hit chances, for example, and kind of has most of the same synergies. And here I also trigger unstable currents and so on, and it did perform relatively close to uh, 
the chain lighting version. So if you really want, you could do that. And then, well, you have to drop, I guess, one skill from your bar, or maybe just do it with unstable currents as well. Unstable currents can trigger those chain lightings for you, for example, but I guess that's going to be somewhat inconvenient and somewhat inconsistent. Maybe you can get rid of like one of the skills here, put a chain lightning and a charge bolts, and then cast one chain lightning, get the lucky hit effects on that all the time, not really, you know, doing more of it, and then just spam charge bolts to get even more lucky hits. So that could potentially be a boost to the Andario Sorg, funny enough, of all things. But there are some downsides of this as well. This Andario Sorg is already not really the tankiest because this lifesteal doesn't really do much since you kind of want to be a full barrier all the time. You don't have, for example, a Shaco here, so you lose a lot of defense. And then if you have the Axial Conduit, you lose even more defense. There's not really anything here, just a little bit of damage reduction. And we kind of need to get extra defenses in this setup. So I don't expect this to be the actual new Andario Sorg meta. But at least if you want to squeeze out the most DPS out of the build, this might actually be the way to go. Or maybe for other setups, there might be some ways to include this chain lighting stuff to then trigger passively certain things like, for example, also the reworked Veers Mastery. So you have this here that has now been changed that when you do a critical strike with a shock skill, you become charged, you take less damage for a while, and then while charged, crits have a chance to cause damage to arc. And the kind of interesting part about this part here is that you just need a shock skill to trigger this charged state, basically, and then all of your damage can produce this extra lightning arc which actually opens this up as a multi-element key passive for basically the first time ever. I guess we had Shatter a little bit in the past and then a few bucks like uh, the Aesop's Ferocity and the uh, Rear's Mastery itself that actually in Season 4 currently is bugged to work with all the men elements, but it was never intended. And here we actually have a rework of that that does open up a cross-element key passive option, basically. As long as you have a lot of crit chance, and you have a shock skill to trigger the charged effect. So that's kind of interesting about it, and this will be very easy to achieve if you use the Axial Conduit. And again, you kind of could potentially get some other cool effects, like some lucky hit effects kind of going passively. So that's something that I think is interesting here. Now, for the second item, we have the Vox Omnium. The way that this works is not really beneficial, but I can talk about what I think about it. So we have a combination of core skill and basic skills here. And you can cast Firebolt, Frostbolt, and Spark while casting the core skill of your choice. So I did make a planner for a potential build for this because first of all, we have to explore what exactly happens when that happens. But at least judging from uh, the video that we have from the, uh, the campfire chat, it does seem like they um, always cast in an angle. So there's two of those extra basic skills and they fly out uh, at a cone basically. So in the middle is your core skill and on the left and the right of that, you're gonna get you know two firebolts or two frostbolts or one firebolt and one frostbolt. So you can kind of mix and match as well. And now is the question, what can you actually do with that? Well, there is a little bit of utility involved here in one of those basic attacks. So if you look at the skill tree here right now, uh, you can get a bit of extra crit chance from glinting spark for example so if you invest those three points here then you could get this eight percent crit buff okay if you go in for frostbolt there is uh, the chance to make enemies vulnerable with the when you hit them frozen or you can also get some mana when you hit shield or frozen enemies and then for firebolt the main uh, support option here i guess is the extra 25 percent burning damage which is actually a relatively significant buff when it comes to uh, burning builds and there's also a way to generate mana, which is pretty nice because compared to the frost bolt here, where you have to hit a chilled or frozen, you can actually pierce through many targets and get many times mana. And it also works on bosses, which is useful. Now, the thing is that mana is generally not really a problem to solve for Sorgs. It's very easy to solve. You can do this in various ways. You have ice armor, you have extra regeneration bonuses, you have Tarasha's ring in every build that also has resource generation. You can roll mana per second. Like, it's not hard to have infinite mana for any kind of purpose that you're trying to achieve, including the Axial Conduit. So even this here is not really hard to sustain, I believe, if you really try. So with that being said, what does it leave us with? Well, we have this crit buff here for Spark, but I gotta say 8% crit buff that you also have to stack up first doesn't really cut it and <laughs> doesn't really make this worth it. So there is only really one option, which is 
you want to deal damage with your basic attacks. And this stuff is also seems to be designed for that because it actually says literally that these extra projectiles that come out from the stuff deal extra damage. Now, what can we use this with? Well, I checked the numbers a little bit and it seems like Spark ain't really it, to be honest. So Spark just doesn't really have a lot of damage. It has um, this kind of quadruple hit and it does like 10% damage baseline that gets a little bit improved. If uh, it only hits one target, it gets an extra 20% multiplier. And that's basically it. So we're looking at like a 50% base damage value here. That is not really that much. It also has this kind of like a jumping effect on the enhanced spark. But realistically, I don't really see much happening here. You can get a bit of crackling energy, but there are way better ways to generate crackling energy from other skills. So you also wouldn't do that. So I think spark is kind of out. So then we have frostbolt and firebolt left. Now, I think that this probably is not intended to be used with the existing Firebolt Sorg because Flame Weaver actually says that you need to cast Firebolt through your Firebolt to then split into three. So if you look at this here, this is the main item for the Firebolt build. I guess a lot of people have been playing with that, that played Sorg. And casting usually refers to the player actively using a skill. Now, this is not always true. There are examples that actually have the word cast in the tooltip and then actually mean it's a trigger. But in general, this seems how most of those tooltips are working. So there might actually not be any interaction whatsoever between Flame Weaver and Vox Omnium. If you look at this here, it also says casting a core skill additionally fires. Look at the wording. Two instances of Firebolt, Frostbolt or Spark matching the elements of the last two non-core cast skills. So this means that maybe it might work a firebolt, but probably not is my expectation because it literally says casting a core skill, so this refers to the player doing something and then fires two instances, meaning that this is specifically not casting and most likely does not work a flame weaver. And I also don't really see why they would do that because Flame Weaver already has its build. We already have the Firebolt Sorg that is quite different from other Sorg builds. And I think just a fine build. It could need some buffs maybe. But at least playstyle wise, I find it somewhat interesting the way it works already. And we would also have the downside that because you cannot actually really target those projectiles, they will always go in this cone shape basically. It's going to be very hard to actually combine this with Flame Weaver to the point where it will feel fun and satisfying and actually good. So this kind of leaves us with Frostbolt. So Frostbolt, I think, might actually be the intended um, mechanic here to use with this. Frostbolt being a DPS build. So <laughs> imagine that. There's actually a bit of like an uh, interesting mechanic here, which is that Frostbolt can have a 100% chance to explode in AoE and has a baseline 50% chance to explode when you hit shield, shield enemies. Now it's going to be very easy to freeze targets thanks to, you know, Frost Nova or the chill itself on the Frostbolt. And also, for example, um, the Tempers, the Worldly Fortune Tempers, you can get chill chance there. There's various ways of freezing monsters really quickly to then get those explosions. So that could be a potential angle here. And there's another pretty good way of buffing Frostbolt, which is uh, already in the game, which is Pain Gorgeous. So the Pain Gorgeous Gauntlets are kind of the basic attack uh, item here. This is um, similar to the Flame Weaver, I guess, a huge buff to a basic attack build. And if you cast a Frostbolt into a pack, then you're going to get this 200% extra damage of what the original Frostbolt did spread to all enemies. But first, you have to mark them with a non-basic skill. Well, turns out, if you look at the tooltip of what Vox Omnian does, that seems to have perfect synergy with Pain Gorgeous. So that is kind of interesting here. You kind of just spam whatever call skill you want. You will mark everything by default with that. And then you just need to make sure that when those frost bolts come out, you will actually hit something basically, not nothing. As long as everything is marked, everything will spread the damage to everything. And you also have the AOE coming from the frost bolt. So this might actually be what is going to happen here and what we are supposed to play with this. Because otherwise I don't really see all too many synergies here outside of yeah, the firebolt potentially allowing you to get the burn on the target for some synergies like burn uh, the burning instinct damage reduction from the paragons or for example devouring blaze a lot of builds for example run fireball enchant and just to have a bit of burn and they could do it with this 
But realistically, I think this might be a Frostbolt option here. At least this is something that I want to explore with this new Vox Omnium. And this finally leaves us with the question, how strong is this actually? Well, assuming that you actually hit the main target <laughs> with both those Frostbolts, which I guess is achievable if you kind of st stand point blank and just shotgun into them, basically, where you don't give the uh, two projectiles any way of spreading out and flying off into nowhere, because in the clips they've showed us... <laughs> Most of those projectors were actually missing the target they were trying to aim at. Um, it kind of comes out as a, I don't know, 30 to 50% damage buff to what it could currently make on Season 4. Now, that doesn't really sound like a lot, to be honest. And uh, this doesn't really consider, you know, other factors like other nerfs that have happened and so on with uh, maybe extra caps and so on. I was purely trying to compare this to another setup that, for example, runs a two-handed regular stuff that has, for example, Moonrise on it, which is like a typical aspect that uh, basic attack builds use. It's a very powerful aspect. It usually goes on a two-handed weapon. It has a 160% multiplier when on a two-handed or, for example, 120 on the amulet. And then we also have, for example, stuff like adaptability here. So we have this here. This is usually on the neck then in that case. So you have a two-handed Moonrise, 160% bonus, and then you have a 120% adaptability. And in this case, when you run the Vox Omnium, well, of course, you don't have a two hand aspect. So you would put the Moonrise on the neck, you put the adaptability on the normal ring, and then you have to drop some random aspect. So this is why this damage bonus that looks pretty juicy here, if you look at this, these projectiles deal extra damage and you get two of them at a time, is actually not that crazy because number one, you lose the double cast stuff. Like we usually would have, you know, a chance to double cast a really high value actually as a temper. So you kind of get the same amount uh, of the projectiles pretty much because, for example, if you do this here, 65% with master working, it kind of almost by default can go to 100%. So this is what you would be running on season four life patch and you would get those two projectiles anyway. So having two projectiles from the stuff is not actually an upgrade. In fact, it's a downgrade because of the spread. So you have a way harder time actually hitting. And the main advantage in this actually lies in the fact that they do a little bit more damage total because after I've done the math, I, it kind of turned out to be roughly just 30 to 50 percent extra damage as i said even including you know or excluding a certain aspect moving all the aspects around and so on and yeah like a few other things i guess that kind of come to play here so it is a bit stronger than what we can make currently but only under the condition that you actually hit with both of those projectiles and everything works correctly so for example those projectiles on the vox omnium also have to work with pain gorgeous which i think they should because there doesn't really seem to be any condition here that sounds like it wouldn't but there's another problem which is the adaptability aspect which specifically calls out when cast at x percent resource you deal so much more damage and if you cannot use adaptability at all in the setup we actually do lose a pretty chunky damage buff and yeah we can replace this with another aspect but even on a normal ring slot this is an 80 percent damage bonus that you are kind of expected to have here that you would lose and then maybe get like some 30% back or so and if that happens and adaptability does not actually work for those Vox Omnium autocasted skills we're basically at a plus minus zero kind of situation I guess where Vox Omnium is yeah maybe around even with a normal option like a normal stuff and then you know having Moonrise there and having another aspect here and just double casting whatever you want. So the main benefit then lies in what do you gain of spamming a core skill here well there are some core skills that actually have a few benefits so for example we have frozen orb which can make enemies vulnerable it can give you faster chill so that kind of synergize with the whole frostbolt theme here uh, we have maybe charged bolts you can spam if you want that allows you to get the extra damage reduction from charged bolts in fact you could even do something like um, a combination you can maybe even have multiple different core skills to choose from and then you cast this one for the damage reduction and you cast this one for the vulnerable and then maybe cast a blizzard to get uh, for example the blizzard damage reduction so that's also something that's kind of interesting to think about since you can just kind of like spam whatever core skill you want uh, you can actually use the lingering effects that some of them have and uh, for example cast a blizzard get this damage reduction here for a few seconds cast the charge bolts get the other damage reduction for a few seconds and you can kind of, kind of combine them as you want and open up some kind of multi-core skill build. So that actually sounds really cool in theory, 
But of course, you also have to give up those skill slots on your bar. And those skill slots are usually occupied by a lot of the defensive skills. And uh, for example, here we have Flame Shield, Teleport, Ice Armor, just kind of like the trio that goes into every single Sorg build. And potentially you want to do even some other stuff, you know, like Frost Nova. And we also have to think about that in order to make this whole thing work, uh, you also have to cast the non-core skills in the right order before you start spamming core skills. <laughs> so there are a lot of conditions attached to this that make it very cool, potentially opens up some multi-core skill stuff, but you also have to think about, okay, like which skills have I cast recently? Like you kind of want to not cast teleport and you kind of want to not cast flame shield. <laughs> so you want to hold on to that as much as possible or just not even have it on the bar so that you can then always get your frost bolts off, for example. Or if you want to do any kind of other combination, firebolt or something, well, you have to think about, okay, you have to do a non-core fire skill. So this could be Inferno, this could be flame shield and and that's basically it. So <laughs> Hydra maybe, right? So this is about it because all of these here are actually core skills. So uh, they will actually trigger this, but they will not, uh, you know, uh, line up the elements in the correct order, basically. So yeah, you can do like a Hydra and then cast your Firebolts, or you can do like an Ice Blades. So Ice Blades obviously kind of has nice synergy here. You can throw in Ice Blades, get vulnerable, get the cooldown reductions and so on. And, uh, you know, this is how you can, for example, trigger Cold for uh, this here. But again, you have this problem that you really don't want to press other buttons because when every time you do this, you will actually lose the ability to get your Frost Balls and then do damage. So you have to be very careful or at the very least have a backup option to, you know, cast something like a Flame Shield and then go back to another core skill. But all of them are kind of like cooldown based, right? So Ice Armor is a cooldown, Frost Nova is a cooldown, Ice Blades is a cooldown, Deep Freeze is a long cooldown, and there's nothing that you really can do here to go back to the right order of elements outside of actually casting the basic skill itself. So you might actually put, for example, Frostbolt on your bar to then use Frostbolt after you have, for example, had to press te Teleport or you had to press uh, your Fame Shield. So you kind of swap between manually casting Frostbolt and triggering Frostbolt all the time. So this might be the only realistic way out here, I think, to actually make this happen. And uh, this is how you can play such a build. So it sounds pretty complicated the way that I've explained it, I guess, because there's a lot of like back and forth, a lot of things to consider. But well, I have thought about this for a while and I was thinking like, what do they want us to do with this thing? And well, I guess we'll see exactly depending on how it works. But currently, this is like how I expect this to go. So you have, for example, Frostbolt on your bar you have not really many defensive skills on your bar and then you spam maybe different core skills that give you some effects. So you maybe might be spamming it's like a bit of charged bolts. You might be spamming a bit of frozen orb here. You might be spamming, I don't know, like a blizzard here and give you the damage reduction. And uh, well, some of the other core skills don't really do that much. Like spamming meteors, for example, doesn't really have any benefit. Yeah, okay, you can immobilize stuff, but that's not exactly a huge benefit. Uh, Fireball, I guess you can get this mana regeneration here, but that's about it. If you don't care about the burning damage, ball lightning has literally nothing. You can get a stun that doesn't really matter. You can get a crackle that doesn't really matter. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's all right. Probably doesn't really work with this very well. Ice shards doesn't have anything. Chain lighting doesn't really have anything besides some crackle. But there is one last thing here that kind of comes into play, but it's a big maybe, which is fireball. And this is the greater fireball upgrade. So this is actually something that people are using currently in season four with Shatter and with the Firebolt Sock, which is kind of the, the strongest push build in the game, actually, thanks to some really weird double dipping bugs with the Shatter key passive. Outside of that, let's say even with Shatter being fixed and stuff, this would actually be a pretty interesting, pretty powerful combo that would work with Firebolt. Now, if, well, if this somehow works with Firebolt, you can stack up a lot of burning damage, just spamming Firebolt into the target, just like you do regularly. And then you could actually benefit from spamming Firebolt into the target while also keeping the, the burn rolling. Because as you spam Firebolt, you will then trigger, for example, Firebolts. And at the same time, you will do this flat 10% of the burning damage applied to enemies all the time from spamming those fireballs. Now, this is kind of like a big maybe because as I discussed earlier, I don't 
actually expect this to synergize with the fireball build or even to work with the flame weaver here that uh, i discussed it may work it may not work but if it does work this could actually also happen to be a pretty big benefit to the existing fireball sword so this is probably in the range of something like a times two or so at least for the fireball sword if you can you know just keep spamming firebolt into the target one way or another basically you can do it manually yourself as like the normal firebolt sword does or you know you just spam the fireball as much as possible to then get this greater fireball effect so this could be a relatively good buff here in the end i guess we'll have to wait and see how exactly it works so those are the two options that i see here with mostly the frostbolt being like the most realistic option here i don't think you're gonna see anything with spark that has any noteworthy damage output i mean even frostbolt is not necessarily even that much stronger to be honest so yeah we'll see but the thing is that for example for pain gorgeous spark doesn't actually really work because it hits four times and uh, pain gorgeous only works with the first instance of the damage so spark is kind of out by default and also like this firebolt as i mentioned yeah, we'll see if that actually works. But yeah, Frostbolt might be a new build coming around the corner here. This is something that I'll be working on. And we'll see if this has maybe any merit for some other uh, setups. For now, though, I do have to say Vox Omnium. It does not look very powerful. I don't expect that even if this Frostbolt build comes out of this, that it's really going to be very good. The numbers on this seem like it's somewhat of a side grade, I guess outside of you know some of the extra core skill benefits of you know getting a bit of stuff here from the blizzard and a bit of stuff here from the frozen orb and so on so currently pre-ptr this is my assessment of those two new unique items and the state of stock in general so i don't think it's really looking that great i think that both of these items probably need some buffs and the sword in general needs a lot of buffs as well. So this is kind of where I'm at right now. But I may be surprised. Maybe there's some other weird unintended stuff going on. Or some stuff I've really overlooked here that I don't know. Maybe you can point out in the comments if you know anything. If you have any ideas about it. If you have been working on some planners. I'll be quite curious about it. But for now, I really like the design of these. Both of these items are really cool. But ultimately, not really sure how good they will be for now. So... We'll only see it on the PTR. Pre-PTR, though, I'm not very hopeful. And that also concludes my summary here of those new unique items. Let me know what you think. And let's see what happens when the time comes. So I hope you enjoyed this. And see you guys next time.